Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to A Game as America, where we're having a bit of fun, we're having a good time. Things are going well. We just got our intelligence agency over in Aquileia, and I reckon it's about time we maybe look into getting in, uh, you know, a commercial hub, maybe an encampment. I don't know, this city is growing, and it's growing quick. Uh, I, I, I think now, hmm, yeah, I think as much as I would love to get my commercial hub up here, I do think that... And do I move? I'm, I'm curious. Do I move this encampment? No, that because that lowers the adjacency of this. I think I go for the encampment now. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get armories unlocked soon. And then I can build the buildings inside the encampment to make up for my lack of production. And because the city's on production focus, I'll also work those specialist slots. And I've got so much food that like, you know, that shouldn't be a problem for me to run that build. Um, I am going to go ahead and grab Prevail. Well, hmm. It would be kind of nice to get Reyna. Um, to have forestry management and tax collector, and maybe even contractor. So I think I'm going to appoint Reyna. And where is she going to go? She's probably going to live over in one of these cities. Whichever one has like three national parks, which is likely to be this city on the truffles. Um, but for now, I'm trying to think of where is a good spot for her. I guess Baltimore is a totally reasonable place to put her. It'll let the borders grow a little bit quicker. All right, so this is the kind of complicated dance I have to do to kill these musketmen. I think I can win this fight, but it's going to be a little bit of a, you know, there's going to be a bit of micro involved. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to harvest uh, Marsh because Marsh lowers appeal. Like you can see here, zero minus one, zero. Da, 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 da. I harvest the Marsh, boom. And that should all update now to be slightly higher. I'm also going to get rid of the rice. It's going to be eventually a forest tile. Let's take the wheat for Los Angeles because I want the wheat. I should also totally be placing my aqueduct, although I don't have to build it immediately. Lovely. There is the buttress. And I think the buttress is a da or sorry, the dam. The buttress buttress gives me access to dams. And I think dams are a priority just because it'll prevent flooding and all of this infrastructure in here. Now, of course, taking bets, taking bets, will this flood before I finish the dam? You know, like we're due for a flood. In fact, it's probably going to flood this turn. I'm going to hit end turn and boom, the flood will come and ruin my day. Um, we did finish a commercial hub in Rome, so I will pick up the market for the extra trade route. Uh, I only have one of one trade routes. Yeah, I've been pretty low on trade routes this game, which is understandable. Let's shoot there. So there's a little bit of a dance. What I have to do is I have to try and make sure that if the musketman tries to chase both of my crossbowmen, I can separate them and then one of them can shoot out of him. We do almost have diplomatic service, which is going to open up the chancery building. I'm excited for that. That's going to give us even more envoys. And we are sitting on a decent number of envoys, like we could consider uh, maybe hunting for suzerainty of something. It would be nice to have suzerainty of Zanzibar just because that's a lot of um, potential return on investment there. Uh, we do have our amphitheater in here. Uh, what can I cheaply get access to? I have no money, unfortunately, to buy tiles. I have nothing I can really sell. Anyone want to buy any of my resources? Eleanor will buy like a bit of iron, which really isn't much. What about Diplo favor? Can I sell that off? 10 gold per turn from Wilfred. That's 300 gold. That's like a tile or two purchasable. Yeah, gold Gold is definitely a problem with my economy right now. Um, I don't know if I want to solve that by building more harbors. I think if gold is continuing to be a problem in this economy, one, two, three, there'll probably be a holy site in here at some point. Maybe it's an okay holy site. Um, it does kill like a nice tile, but you know, holy site kind of takes precedent here. Uh, so I will go ahead and build the amphitheater because that's worth culture. And I don't need to build Renaissance walls yet. I don't even have them unlocked. Would be nice to have them though. So I need to start picking out cities with about 20 production. Any city with like 15 to 20 production. Yeah, like Rome. I'm going to crack out a few settlers. I'll finish that market for sure. And then I'll probably get a trader and then a settler. But I'm going to start making settlers out of Rome. Um, although even though Aquileia is probably the best place, it's building a dam right now. So I kind of need to get that finished. I guess if I finish the dam, I might move Magnus over there and start producing settlers or something. Or I'll, I'll just start producing settlers, I guess. Now, I know it sounds crazy to be playing a game as America, who's like entirely based around high appeal and to have harvested away basically all of the appeal in my empire. But the problem was I didn't really have high enough appeal in my empire to take advantage of it. So I'm playing like a traditional industrialist game, and then I'm going to tr transition into a de-industrialized game. So you can see here, uh, the musket men are not dumb, okay? They're actually quite intelligent. They will attempt to isolate your units and push them further away from each other, which is clever. But if we carefully position our crossbowmen, 
so that he can only ever chase one at a time and use this man in arms fortified on defensive terrain as a linchpin as well, we should be fine because he does have battle cry and he is on defensive terrain and I can get shots off with these guys. Now I'm pretty sure a crossbowman can tank one hit from a musketman, especially a musketman that they have damaged. Um, so if I fortify here, you will not survive. Well, you're fortified with plus six defense, three from being on the hill, three from fortification. Yeah, I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're going to be fine there. Uh, we did finish at Theatre Square in Charleston. We don't have space to drop another district, so we're going to work on an amphitheatre as well. And we're going for the amphitheatre so that we spread our borders because that's essentially like getting a gold income boost because, you know, that we don't have to buy the tiles that we would normally have to buy is kind of the logic there. Um, okay, what is our next step? I think we might be overbuildering at this stage, but that's like a totally normal thing to do is to slightly overbuilder in a game. Um, which tells me I can probably come into Ostia and just build a district or a spy or something useful. So the two crossbowmen here are a problem. This musketman is not a problem. You're going to take another shot. I'm going to try to run you away. I don't want you to take more damage. So that's fine. You stay fortified. A little bit of a battle going on here, but I think we're, we, we've killed one of the musketmen, so it's going fine. Let's grab ourselves a traitor to send to another city. I have more districts I can place in here. If I were to think about what I wanted from the city, like a holy side on this sheep isn't a terrible move, I feel. What do I want from the city of Rome? I mean, Rome is already doing the things that I wanted to do. It has high production, it has high food, it's growing, it's producing money and gold and all that sort of jazz. So I don't think I need to change anything. I got my harbor in Baltimore, which is another trade route. Let's grab that trader. I'm probably going to move the trader from Rome into Baltimore, send that to Aquilia and then send the trader from Baltimore to Los Angeles so we can get started on Los Angeles's harbor um, and sort of use my traders to continuously build more trade routes um, for certain cities. Crossbowman is a little bit of a problem but we do have the option to retreat. This musketman is now a lot weaker. Catapult here isn't scary. Step here to give him plus two combat strength. I could harvest, I, getting 150 gold right now is actually pretty based. It'll open up options for me. I think I can come in here now and cancel all these builders and decide upon which, which of these do I want. So I'm losing 75% of my food surplus to not having aqueducts. So I feel like I could go for more population in here. I don't think the city needs more population. Like realistically, if I get more population in here, what am I going to do? Not much. Um, I don't think a grove does a huge, like a, a preserve doesn't do much for me right now. I do feel like getting a theater square or an entertainment complex up to make future theater squares. Uh, so this nighter is really unfortunate. It means I have to compromise on this theater square and move it one tile to the right. Speaking of nighter, mm, annoying spot for one, but it doesn't destroy anything. It's underneath the district. That's good. Underneath the district. That's good. Another copy of nighter here. Okay, that opens up options. And then the final one is there. Okay, so we got a lot of nighter. Um, which may actually be sellable because it's a, the newest one. Yeah, it looks like a few people might want it. So I'll give it a few turns of stacking up nighter. I think getting an entertainment complex here sets me up pretty well. I haven't gone for any wonders this game. Honestly, like wonders are amazing, but I find you can actually just ignore them. They're, they're often a lot more trouble than they're worth. That's just like my take. I... I do like wonders and they're fun to build, but I find that like when I have the option, I mean, I could just make settlers and builders. Why wouldn't I make settlers and builders? You know what I mean? It just seems like I'm hurting myself to do anything else. So what we want to do here is step you here and step you here. So we're in a defensive posture and move you this way. How far am I from conservation? I'm quite a bit away from conservation. My culture will need to improve quite a bit. Um, which is where the theater squares come in, especially with my relationship with Kaguana that I'm going to continue to develop. Some of these nighters are not going to get improved, but definitely like things like horses can get improved pretty easily. Eleanor wants an economic alliance. That's actually a pretty decent move here for me. Now, one problem I am running into is that Eleanor is in the game. Visselbanken is a good thing to pick up here. It means my international trade routes. It could be a way for me to deal with my gold problem is to send trade routes internationally to Eleanor. Who else could I get a, into? I think I can actually get an alliance with Ba Triu. Cultural alliance. Well, I actually, I don't want her to settle towards me. So maybe I'll go for like a military alliance. So we're a little bit better defended. Should anyone, de so should someone declare war on me? 
we'll be in a little bit better spot. Okay, so this like slight manipulation I did over here worked out quite well. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade a man at arms um, and then I'm going to double shoot this crossbowman and then approach him uh, with a man at arms. Yes, I am approaching him while this crossbowman retreats to heal. So I think we've more or less navigated our way through the battle of, uh, of the northern uh, hills. And the next step is to pick up a governor title. I don't think I need naval tradition this game. Skippable. I guess there is an envoy on it, so I will pick it up. But I think we can head to humanism pretty safely right now. We got our trader in Rome. Let's go ahead and pop it in Baltimore. So with the trade route completed in Rome, I mean, I would love to get a, stable, a barracks and an armory. It's an extra two great general points, which could be worth some error score and potentially provides me with a bit of defense. Plus one production, plus three production. It's four production from that. That's like a... 10% production increase from getting barracks armory. Uh, that means in 10 turns from now it pays for itself, essentially. Well, it's a lot more than 10 turns, but... Well, no, it would be the number of turns it took. Yeah, it would be... It would be a while before this paid itself off. Hmm. I think while I still have the option to, I'm going to start spamming out settlers from Rome because it's a, essentially a finished city. Some of my cities are way ahead of other cities. Uh, if we look at the city of Boston, I don't think I ever really planned for where the hell I was going to put a... Um, theater square or anything like that in the city of Boston, which kind of makes this city, I'm a little bit unfortunate in that respect. I guess, theoretically, well, I already have my preserve. What's the appeal like here? Without forests or any other source of appeal, the appeal in this area just isn't good enough to make this work. Um, so I may go for like something cheap. My entertainment complexes are discounted, so maybe that's a good move here. If I put an entertainment complex here, it'll provide extra appeal to three, three of my national park tiles. And I could always put a theater square next to it as well. So, you know, uh, alternatively, I could work on a theater square that's actually useful. Or a holy site that's actually useful. Or a triple of all of those things. Oh, baby, a triple? I'm thinking, oh, baby, a triple? Uh, maybe a holy site and a theater square. Yeah, let's do holy site. I think I need more holy sites. My faith income is very low for the amount of national parks that I need. So more holy sites. Uh, will help with that significantly. Uh, looking at the city of Washington, we have ourselves a spy. <sighs> Nobody has money to steal from. Like, literally the only city with a commercial hub that I can find are my cities. Nobody has spaceports. I guess I could steal tech from... I don't know. Uh, Scotland. I'll get a friendship with him. In fact, I should probably be sending out embassies because I do have access to now the chancery building, which I, I need to build. Um, it's like a priority building, for sure. For sure, it's a priority building. We're on turn 141, and I would say that we are making okay progress. We need to continue to expand, is our big thing. So I'm being denounced by a couple of people. He wants to sell me a great work of writing for a little bit of random stuff. I'll take those. I'll start generating tourism right now. It seems okay to me. First points of tourism in the entire game. Step into that city and heal. Man-at-arms take that fight. You get that kill. This trader is going to look for, I think if I look for most gold, okay, I could trade with Zanzibar or I could trade with Eleanor. And then if I come in here and plug in Visselbanken, I would get two food and two production for that trade route. Plus I would solve a gold issue that I have. Ah, oh, man, it's a good play. It's a good play. Whereas if I go for the internal trade route, it's three food, four production, which is equally still a good play. Apparently, trading with Scotland is actually just god tier. Um, Scotland, would you like a research alliance? Scotland would. Would you pay me? So uh, I might just start trading with Scotland then. So what I'll need to do is to come in here. I'll need to get rid of this. I'm going to take out urban planning and plug in Visselbanken. Now, by moving colonization up here, Visselbanken will allow me to get extra yields. And now, if I organize by this, you can see Sterling should be way higher on, on this list. I don't know why it hasn't updated, because we're allies. We are allies. Trade routes to allied cities or vassal city-states. Okay, trade route. I guess it's just missing the yield. Oh yeah, there it is. It showed up on the trade route there. So now it's a three, three food, four production trade route to Scotland is equally as valid. And I'm picking up science and I'm picking up gold. So I think that is, um, that's actually just like top-notch result on a trade route there. So internal trade routes are out and I'm now going to be starting to do external trade routes. Looking at New York, uh, I forget where New York built its preserve. I think it's like over here or something. I want to faith purchase the Gurdwara. Um, and I guess the Grove is the only thing that I can build in here. And so therefore I will, which will incentivize me to start improving my tile yields. Now the city of Cleveland had planned to use this cattle tile for its thing, um, but I can't actually place it. 
I can't place any districts in here, so I'm going to work on ancient walls. In fact, I'm going to do the same thing in New York because the walls generate tourism sooner and better. Kill here, kill here, step forward, step forward. Need to threaten him with a unit that's in his face. Um, where am I working unimproved tiles? Probably Washington. We chopped out walls in Cleveland. Let's go for medieval walls. Accept deal. I need to um, plug in the wall production card and the unit maintenance card. I need to plug in both of those. So I'll plug those in when I get medieval fairs. I should have, I should have reworked my government a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the volley promotion and then step you fortify. I'm in a bit of a pickle actually in my positioning. I'm in a positioning pickle. If I step forward on this crossbowman, he can shoot this musketman, but he'll be off of... Well, he will have adjacent ally defenses and a promotion available, which will buy me time to get this crossbowman in range and this man-at-arms to the front line. So we'll see if that works out for me. Minus three loyalty in the first city to reach the front line. We settle it immediately. Now it flips in 19 turns, which is fine. What we're going to do is harvest uh, out a monument in a granary. My people settle where they please. Sorry, Canada. It's kind of necessary for me to do that. So I'm going to step this crossbowman back a tile. I'm going to use this crossbowman to shoot this guy. I'm going to move this builder forward to hopefully entice them to move there. And then I'm going to move the man-at-arms to the left so that I can maybe survive this configuration another turn. We'll harvest here. That'll finish the granary, so the city will grow ever so slightly faster. And then the monument harvest will come next. Okay, you survived like I'd hoped. Let's pull you back, pull you back, shoot there, and shoot there. So that's the musketman dead. So now all I need is for this crossbowman to step forward into my trap, which is here. And then three crossbowmen can unload onto him. Okay, he didn't fall into my trap. But he fell into an equally good trap for me, which is I can tank for a bit with this guy. Um, step forward, step forward, spend a little bit of time healing with these guys. We've gotten our medieval walls in New Orleans. We're 10 turns from unlocking Renaissance walls, which will start pumping on the Diplo favor that we can trade for gold. Um, speaking of New Orleans, we can get our preserve now. It'll take a while to build, 18 turns, but that's okay. I'm okay with waiting 18, 18 turns for a preserve. Trader finished in Baltimore, which we're going to send to Los Angeles to trade with Scotland again. I could go for a mausoleum or a killway here, but I don't think, I don't think that's what I want. I think I will just slowly work on walls and stuff like that. I definitely want forestry management on Reina. Another settler heading straight over here. This is a minus five spot, 16 turns. I need to pump population into this city. We might be able to pull that off. We'll see. We shoot the crossbowman. We attack it with a man-at-arms. Hopefully he takes the bait and shoots the man-at-arms. There's a swordsman here too. We're in okay. You're fully healed. You can start rejoining the front line. We want to send this based on... We want to send this based on gold, I reckon. I wonder why my trade routes to this guy are so bad. It's probably because um, I don't have a road to him. But when the road is completed, our gold is going to start increasing now. A lot of my turns now, at this point, are a lot of actions have just kind of been put in motion. And I, there's not a whole lot of interactivity in an individual turn. Can I get this kill? I can. Yoink. Let's keep stepping you. Take a moment to heal. We got our amphitheater in Chicago. The borders still haven't expanded, but we could theoretically get our entertainment complex. And Chicago's not a bad city to build it because the city will be able to continue to grow. I think I'm going to pick up ancient walls first so I don't hit my gro gro growth cap. And then I'll go for entertainment complex. So I'll place that first and then do ancient walls into entertainment. Um, I have room for another spy. So that needs to be done probably in Rome. Rome is probably my best spot for that. And I'm also underutilizing Magnus's chopping ability. Although I, I don't really have good chops this game, but I'm kind of forced to chop regardless. Harvest here to get that settler out faster. The faster I get these settlers out, the faster Washington can stop gimping itself um, by constantly pumping out settlers. Just like every now and again, it's, it's a good idea to sacrifice a city that has power and I'm Washington is done, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Washington is done sacrificing for the rest of my empire, and it's time for Washington to grow into a real city. Because it spent the entire game doing things to benefit other cities. Uh, let's see here. Earn double people, 100%. I guess trade routes to industrial city-states is fine. Uh, great riders would be nice. It would be nice to get great riders. People tend to ban great riders when Eleanor's in the game, I find. Yeah, people tend to ban great riders, which... It's kind of what I was expecting. I need to explore more. I'm at the phase of the game where I'm starting to build districts and I don't have enough information about what's on the map. Um, and that's problematic. So I'm going to need to find time to build scouting units. Ideally, skirmishers are good. Um, courses are also a good option. 
I am losing loyalty in Detroit. I'm not quite hitting my growth milestones here. I will kind of be forced to buy this tile and harvest it next turn so I can get the city to three population really quickly to lower the pressure. We got walls in New York, which is giving the city a little bit of extra growth room. It's working good tiles. It's like a fine city. Go ahead and grab medieval walls while the city continues to grow. We'll harvest here, get that settler. Well, these settlers are super expensive. I think, I think this is the last settler that Washington builds. The city has fallen off now and it's, it's built so many cities. Like it built like all, like most of these cities, a couple of these cities, most of these cities in here it's built. So it's, it's done its job as far as I'm concerned and self-sacrificed enough. I know that's probably a weird way to think about cities, like rather than thinking about my empire as a whole, but I do find it's helpful to think of individual cities as having like motivations and desires in the sense that like, oh, okay, it helps me like organize my thoughts around what I want to do with these cities. I think in terms of positioning on the national park for the city, it's probably, well, this gypsum really makes it annoying to put it here because ideally it would go on this four diamond shape, but then the gypsum is blocking where like as a really prime um, preserve location, like annoyingly. So we might have to rethink that. But I know there's a city going over here and there's potentially cities over here in the east too. We'll send you to the north. I want to get that spy now. So we'll slow our expansion in exchange for a spy. Spies are just good to get. I'm kind of, I'm sad. I miss the days when AIs would build commercial hubs. It feels, I don't like it. Also, I feel like Auto Explorer has way too much of a bias for exploring north to south rather than east west. I don't know if that's just me that spotted that, but it's something, it's definitely a bias I've noticed. Um, let's go ahead and pick up arenas. That's going to be culture, amenities, and tourism eventually. So all three things that we definitely want this game. Yeah, I'd like to claim the Ubsoner Hollow. Like, if I'm thinking about it, there's definitely a viable city in and around here. And I think it's on this tile right there. That's the tile that it goes. And then it puts a preserve right here. So that's what this settler will probably be while I figure out what's actually going on over here to the east. So this city is two, two pop. So I harvest and that'll instantaneously boost it to four population because you get the first pop immediately and then the overflow food fills up the next food bar. So that's why you always wait until a population has just grown before you do a food chop. Otherwise, the city would only be growing to three population on this turn rollover. So now it's a four pop city. And now loyalty looks a little bit better in here. And like there's another settler approaching and that city will also generate its own population. And there's also a marsh here that I can harvest. So on the whole, things are looking pretty okay. Really good gypsum tile here. I want to be careful because I'm so close to getting the benefit here. Man, I just wish I had like just, I wish I had conservation already. If I could plant forest, man. Ooh, baby, let me tell you about the yields my empire would have. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have that yet. So I got to make do with probably just grassland hills, ideally away from this. Ancient walls in Baltimore. That's good news. Mausoleum is looking more tempting every single day, but I must abstain. I must be strong. There is a musket man. Not quite the piano man, but close enough. Cracking out a settler. Washington, gypsum, feeling good. Feeling good. On Michael Buble today, boys. All right, settler cracked out. Now, that's the last one that I'm settling, so I'll, I'll get you here. This is like the most unimportant of these cities. I mean, I would like to settle it, but honestly, this city is a terror. It's going to need a trade route, and trade route's going to be the only production it gets. So this is going to be a rough city in here. So thinking about the actual, like, get a grove immediately, Washington, please. Like, immediately get a grove, get a shrine. Uh, amphitheater in Charleston is looking okay. We got ourselves a built-up, Thing. Still don't have the Grove tile, unfortunately, which kind of tells me that I have room for another district. Well, not really, because I need housing, which means I need to build walls and I have to say, yeah, OK, it's housing. It is housing. It is harvest here again to boost the city to five population. So loyalty will be even less of an issue in Detroit. It's kind of on the, the vanguard of my of my empire here. So trying to build mines while you're doing an appeal game is a bit like trying to have your cake and eat it too. It's a, it's a tough navigation that you have to do, like specifically where you build things and how you build things. I mean, this nighter would just be good if I had it. 17 turns, you were supposed to get less loyalty pressure, not more. <laughs> how is it worse? I guess Quebec is like right there. Okay, cool. First Renaissance era tech, which is siege tactics. We could build Renaissance walls, which is kind of scary because we're only... We're, we're, we're only researching our first Renaissance wall tech that we, like, you know, we, we, we pushed hard for this. And, uh, you know, the Renaissance era is basically over and we're getting our first tech in it. Now, talking about our next steps, it would be good to pick up printing. It makes great works of writing better. My economy is just absolutely down the esser, dude. It is circling the drain. Let's see if we can sell off any, log any strategics. Um... Any Diplo favor? Sure. 
to sell off literally everything we can. Can I get a great work of riding or two? Eleanor will sell me one for 14 gold per turn. Another one for 14. 14 gold per turn seems okay. So I just did a whole bunch of trade deals to um, increase my gold income. And then I immediately used that gold to buy great works of riding for, for two main reasons, obviously, because tourism is how I win the game. And now I'm making 10 tourism per turn. So like that's a significant leap forward from two. I've literally quintupled my tourism per turn. But more importantly, I also have more culture. So I'm getting to conservation faster. And conservation is like the triggering for the beginning of my win condition. Um, so I need to get to conservation, like, literally as fast as humanly possible. All right, settle on truffles. Boom. Canada won't like that I settled Atlanta, like, right on their border. But, you know, what are they going to do about it? What can they do about it? They can do nothing. Falling by 0 0.6 now. And our tourism is better. Let's go ahead and gain sources so we can start spy stealing tech. There's our bad boy. All right. I think, I think we've dealt the death blow the barbarian horde here. Okay, there's a battering, random battering ram. We got our chancery, so now we're cranking away at 18 influence per turn. Monarchy, by the way, totally balanced. I don't think an encampment is necessary here. I think I can safely go for empire-wide infrastructure like settlers. The city of Aquilia. The city does take a long time to grow, but it has a pretty good food surplus, so I think it's okay to be spending food like that. Because you have to remember, every time you build a settler, it resets the city's growth. Uh, down a population so building settlers has a food expense to it essentially so you have to kind of think about that a little bit carefully we've access to humanism so potentially more culture coming down the pipeline here um you know what else i need <laughs> do you know what i really 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 need like four manually controlled scouts and to get rid of professional army to plug in conscription i would also like craftsmen so I'm going to plug in Craftsman. I need Retainers and Limitanii. There's just so many things that I could make use of here. I definitely need to keep Serfdom and Colonization in because I'm using them. Otherwise, I'm kind of stuck in the build that I have right now. Charismatic Leader, I guess you could make an argument that it's only three of my 18 influence points per turn. So I could potentially drop that if there was a card that was like important enough, like maybe Merchant Confederation is, is a lot of gold or urban planning, just gonna speeds up all of my cities ever so slightly. Or maybe retainers could be helpful. I'm not seeing anything here that screams like super powerful. I guess invention is theoretically like super powerful for me because I this does represent like eight great engineer points per turn, which like I think actually doubles how many I'm making. It triples it. That's like triple great engineer points. So maybe more, maybe we can use Brunelleschi to build some wonders um, without having to, to stop off. Maybe, you know, save him for Cristo Redentor, which, you know, is definitely an important wonder here for us. Potentially. I think Eiffel Tower is maybe more important to me this game. We got our spy in Rome. I don't need to build any more districts. The settlers it is. Well, I could cut down on my scouting curve by getting two coursers in here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. A couple skirmishers and a couple coursers sent in each direction to scout. I think that's the that's the way forward here. Uh, so looking at the city of Detroit, it's in good shape. It's got a monument and a granary. It's got five population, so it's cranking away on that on that land. I have to remember which city is building which preserve and stuff like that. I guess uh, Detroit has to build the, the the theater square that's adjacent to it. So I'll place that for sure. I'm going to build walls in here just so the city isn't immediately rolled over by like a random uh, Canadian unit. But you know, the we stranger things have happened than Canada declaring a war on me. So I think it's a legitimate concern that Canada could just go all like, gee, bud, you know, your land is looking real real liberatable there but um so you know you gotta you gotta be careful when the canucks come for you dude there's there's not much you can do to survive i guess a pasture in cincinnati helps a lot actually granary monument this is on freshwater so i can go monument granary and then uh, i could actually theoretically also place this preserve real early like real real early um so monument granary preserve in here is fine another city another day another city let's go ahead uh really really nice gypsum tile here loving it uh i think this particular city i would like monument i think it's watermill granary monument mm, watermill yeah i don't have good tiles to grow to so the delaying the granary is fine i think because typically you want to get the monument early if you a don't need the housing from you don't need the housing or food from your granary um or b um, you have no good immediate tiles to work. But if you have no good tiles to work in the second ring either, then a monument doesn't really do as much as a granary. Right? They're, they're, now, 
in the end, it's, re it's really a small optimization that's not going to like make or break your game. But I think it's enough of an optimization to where it will have an effect. Okay, we finally found this barb camp that has just been spewing out units at me this entire game. It really triggered me. Like, look at the actual literal, like, snow crusade that I've sent on against this goddamn thing. It is like, it is, this, this has been a thorn in my side, and I'm not afraid to admit it. All right, very, very nice, Corey. One, three, one, two, in terms of yields. Do have another one of these to sell now. 10 gold per turn. Hell yeah, I'll take that. Uh, we got another spy. I'll send it to... Uh, I guess Rome is kind of on par with me in tech. I'll send it to Hagmatana, Persia. The Renaissance era is ending, like I predicted. And we got our arena in Ostia. Now, probably somewhere, like... I can maybe sneak in, like this theater square. Or I can sneak in the preserve. But then I gotta go mass builder again. Because look at all the tiles I have to improve. So I'm gonna need builders, dude. I'm gonna need builders and they're gonna i'm gonna have to have a builder positioned in basically every city but what i'm probably going to do is send builders across my empire as like a wave of locusts like slowly improving and fixing everything that i want to fix i'm actually quite happy here that this guy stepped out of his encampment to attack me maybe i can clear it with a builder the poetic irony that he spent so long attacking and destroying my infrastructure and i was able to beat him with a literal infrastructure building unit very very poetic in terms of irony so builder charges are going to start being conserved now. So the trade route in New Orleans is quite nice. How badly do I want an envoy with the Vatican City? I mean, it is extra faith. If I put an envoy... Well, yeah, I don't think a trade route envoy is worth it. I don't think being suzerain of the Vatican matters here. I think being friendly with them matters. So plus three, three more envoys in this city-state is like a significant boost in my faith when I'm going to want a lot of faith soon. Where do I want to put this trader is the question. Which city out of all of my cities would make best use of a trade route to Scotland, ideally. It's probably Cincinnati, one of these freshly settled cities, if it can make it happen. Depends on the range of the route, unfortunately. You don't always have control over that. So now if I'm thinking, um, 7, 20, 45, there's like 60 turns until I get conservation. And that'll definitely speed up as I get like more population, more yields and stuff like that. I don't know if it's a good idea to build mines now because the return on investment on that is really, really low. Like a single builder is a pretty significant investment for me now. At this point, I think I start moving builders to the core to start prepping for the um, for the conservation play. I would say this is definitely going to be a very slow and difficult game. We're super behind where we should be. Um, Eleanor is already like popping off with tourism. She's up to 64 per turn, um, but it's not unwinnable as it currently stands. Man, this is a mountain range. All right, we clear the barb camp with a infrastructure unit like we predicted. Poetic irony. It's a beautiful thing. Not every day you get to pull off an, a move that is poetic irony. Yeah, we're going to trade with Sterling because that represents the most gold and a bunch of production and food. That'll help Cincinnati get off, get its feet off the ground, which is what we want. We want new cities to come to be producing as fast as possible. And we want to get them up to a point because it's really easy to get a new city up to a reasonable point where it's helping out. Oh God, I heard another barb camp up here. Okay, it's all the way on the other side of the map. It literally doesn't exist to me. I don't care. I want to place my preserve on this preserve tile. Boom. That got rid of the marsh, and I didn't care about chopping the marsh. So preserves are coming up. We got our lighthouse in Los Angeles. Maybe a good time to place the theater square. Um, probably a similar thing to do in Baltimore. <sighs> oh, man, has this been a... This has been a doozy of a game to get going. I'm really enjoying it, though. It's kind of like a really interesting puzzle. To kind of figure out how do I completely unscrew this game that Rome got me into. And I feel like we're slowly approaching it. If in doubt, build settlers. <laughs> like every time. Every single time. If you're in doubt and you have extra land you can do. Just get more settlers. You want to give me like a little bit of Diplo favor? Nah, okay. What about one Diplo favor? Nah, okay. So open borders with Rome means that this cavalry unit head towards Scotland to start to learn more about this. Find more city-states. Um, this is about, because I'm actually building districts now, finding city-states has like significant tactical economic importance, especially like anything that gives gold, faith, or culture. Those are going to be super important. And then we'll send a scout in the opposite direction through my other allies. Uh, so Pingala needs to be moved to a real city. Also Magnus got yeeted, um, which kind of opens up like the perfect opportunity to move him to Aquilia. Should have done this a while ago. I'm missing out on a lot of science and culture by not doing this. Um, and then Victor can be put in Rome, I guess, is fine. We've got three envoys in the bank. Can I get suzerain of anyone? Anyone that matters? I could take suzerain of Buenos Aires, which would get me a little bit of extra amenities, which I suppose is fine. I'll do that. 
So I'm getting, I'm getting envoys every 10 turns, which is super fast, by the way. This is like the power of the monarchy government. You just get so many envoys. It's fantastic for people like Hungary. You just get, especially if you build your diplomatic quarter nice and early, you get so many envoys. Abby, good job, Abby. You have established yourself. Go ahead and try to steal tech from me. Oh my God, the greatest Huey in human history. <laughs> the one tile Huey. It's not quite as bad as the one tile Petra, but my God, is it up there? It's up there. This is like AI, <laughs> AI pathing 101. Um, entertainment complex. So we're starting to look at slightly better appeal in some of these places. Now that we're finishing some of these like high appeal districts. Like if I look here, you know, there's a couple of tiles starting to come back, which means it's probably time to start getting rid of some of these mines to let the, let nature recover, let it heal. Um, I like the idea of going for the arena. I also like the idea of going for an art museum. I'm generating very few artist points somehow, even though I have like multiple theater squares. It's kind of baffling, to be honest. Um, I guess I didn't finish many, but if I pick this up, this is like a lot of great artist points, but the arena is quite good too. Kicks in a lot sooner, gives me amenities. I'll go for the arena. Arenas are rare and I think valuable because they are local force multipliers. They increase the power of your economy in that one city significantly. And it also lowers your empire-wide demand on amenities too. So it has a lot of a lot a lot of kind of ancillary kind of benefits. Printing is good. Now we're getting more tourism from our great works. Um, and I think getting my theater squares up is a good idea. Soon TM. Aha, another barb camp. There was three barb camps that were just chain sending stuff at me. I don't have many fishing ships, so cartography isn't a priority for me. I'm trying to think. Banks are okay. I'll go ahead and work towards banks. It's a good income booster. Renaissance walls rep represent... So, soon enough, Renaissance walls will give me six tur like three tourism, two science, and two diplo favor. So I feel like Renaissance walls are a high priority for me in cities that are close to finishing them. Um, otherwise, they're just like, you know... They're just like a nice to have thing if I can get them. So specifically here with these units, I'm hunting uh, era score and city states, ideally. If I can find either of those things, I'm like, I'm golden. I'm happy. Right, we have access to mercantilism, which yeah, maybe triggers some changes in our government a little bit. Nah, I think, I think we're happy actually as we are. We're continuing to expand. We're continuing to explore. Shoot this man. Prepare yourself. Let's work on colonialism. Would have been good to pick up an archaeological museum. We got Philip, we got Filippo Brunelleschi, which is quite nice. And it would be nice to get Leonardo da Vinci. It's a lot of culture. We got our shrine in Washington and we have access now. Look at these mountain tiles. Hell yes. So not quite where we would like them to be, but definitely in the sort of a direction of that we what we want to do here. The first time we've seen real yields come come together. It's going to be a very satisfying game once I get it all all pieced together here. Let's grab the temple. That's six faith per turn. That's a lot of um, potential national parks. Let's go ahead and get a grove in here. Good, good. And then Renaissance walls, because they're valuable. Let's see, your grove is okay. We'll get to work on it. And then your Renaissance walls. Your grove, man, Cleveland, I don't even remember where your grove is. Your grove is here. The appeal is quite poor. Part of the low appeal is, um, there's a mine there. So if I got rid of this mine, Maybe. Maybe the appeal improves a bit. And if I get rid of this mine and this mine, the appeal improves enough for me to feel comfortable to justify a grove in here. Um, and also I swap the cattle tile so I can place a theater square in this city like so. Boom. So yeah, it'll probably be grove, renaissance walls, theater square in that order. Filippo is here. Maybe a Ruhr Valley on the card, something like that could be We'll see. But we have Filippo. Probably going to save him for the Eiffel Tower. Probably the best use for him. I'm surprised the city has full loyalty, considering how much loyalty pressure I've been putting on it the entire game. We've got another courser here. I'm going to send this one more directly east, I think. That's all the courses I need. I think it would be good to get Renaissance Walls as a good return on investment there. Even though I will be building settlers, you know, I have to do a little bit of building normal stuff. And then this... A skirmisher will be sent sort of more of a southeastern direction towards France. Well, I guess it doesn't hurt to send it straight across the map first. The world enters into the industrial era. It's a beautiful time. Let's go ahead and reform the coinage is probably my best bet here. Uh, theoretically, there's some natural wonders out there that I haven't discovered. Yeah, I think Hicks and Tracones, while I'm exploring in this era, represents a significant amount of value. Finished a holy site in Boston. What's our grove looking like? I guess it improves one tile. Is that good enough to justify a 21 turn build? 
I don't know. I guess finishing the groves. Nah, I gotta get the shrine. That's three faith per turn. It's huge. Talking about return on investment here, baby. So I think Detroit should place its preserve now. There you go. Then rush walls. I guess rushing walls is the best way it helps me with my victory. More barbed man at arms over here in the north. Continuing to explore and fight my way across the, the frozen wastes. How did this forest get through my 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 absolute like crusade against against forests that I went on in this area? I'm surprised it survived. There's no I don't think it's worth it to chop it now. Maybe might be too late into the game to chop it. Uh, my empire is like giga huge though, which I really really enjoy. I enjoy having a large empire. I know it's a lot of work to manage a large empire, but it really is fun. That's like the upside of having a lot of work to do is that it's kind of fun, especially if like in multiplayer, it is absolutely awful to manage a large empire. But in single player, you know, shit's easy. You, you take all the time you want. You could, you could take a break from the game. You can plan it uh, off screen, you know. And if you're really unethical, you can like throw, throw down a save file and, and, you know, play out a few turns and, and, and try stuff out. I've, I've done that a couple of times on some series. It's usually when I'm doing some kind of meme series that required like a very specific RNG thing to happen. And I'm like, okay, you know, am I, am I backing up the wrong tree here with this, with this save file? Is this RNG thing just going to happen? And, you know, occasionally the RNG thing happens and it kind of sucks. But hey, you work your way through it. Okay, plus one food from pastures is great. Looking at medieval walls in Rome. Let's get our Renaissance walls up. Let's go on full walls. Escape on foot. And he was killed. Okay, lost a spy. I don't think spies actually represent very good value for me in this particular game. Uh, sorry, I'm going to tell him I'll stop spying on him. Yeah, nobody's building commercial hubs. So I think spies are like a net negative on my economy and like mental because I have to spend time like actually building and maintaining and doing stuff with spies, which is just like not great. Are you f are you kidding me? I walked my goddamn horseman into two enemy barbarian field cannons. <sighs> there goes my scouting on this side, at least. I have a scout down here. I need to I need to I need to avoid that section. I need to stick to civilized lands. I was trying to stay inside people's borders. And I was like, yeah, if I stay inside people's borders, I won't like, I won't get screwed by the barbarians. But apparently I wandered just like to the edge of Ire, where there's apparently a billion field cannon armies just sitting out. Uh, three of them. Oh my God, a billion wasn't far off. Jesus Christ. I don't want to spend faith on Gurdwaras. As much as I want a Gurdwara, it's not worth it to spend faith in them now. I'm going to hard build that. Uh, Los Angeles managed to improve its trade route infrastructure. So we will make a trader happen and then we'll get to work on walls. Want those Renaissance walls, baby? I need to renew my alliance with Bash for you. I can't remember what kind of alliance I had with her. It was a military one, I think. Renew with her economic with what's her name? Eleanor. It's great news. I feel like scouts should have the lowest targeting priority of any unit in the game. Like. <sighs> Barbs should kind of semi-ignore scouts unless they're the only unit in range that they can reach this turn. It just feels annoying to me. Uh, fishing boats get plus one production. We've got colonialism now. I think this whole continent is like literally... Oh no, there's a couple of continents here. Okay. So we... Somehow I managed to spawn on like one... Like my entire empire is encompassed by a single continent, which is kind of funny. Kind of explains the mountain ranges though. We have got colonialism. Natural history is nine turns away. And then conservation is 16 turns away. So next episode, because this is the end of this episode, we are going to see my entire empire get recarpeted in beautiful forests and amazing yields from my preserves. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.